21 here on the great WRKO, the voice of Boston. Okay, my friends, one of the great things about these conventions, when you're broadcasting live, as we are from the Republican National Convention, are the people that you just see moving around, mulling around. You can just grab them, literally grab them by the elbow and say, hey, come on in here, give us an interview. I met this guy at the final Trump rally the night before the New Hampshire primary. Many of you know him. He is a great veteran, a great American, a great patriot. He is Al Baldacero. He's Donald Trump veterans co-chair. Al, thank you so much for coming on the Cooner Report. And buddy, let me ask you, how are you enjoying the convention so far? Jeff, first of all, I want to thank you for having me here. It's, it's an honor. And you do look wide awake, by the way. <laughs> uh, but anyways, the convention's going great. We had a little temporary setback that the solution was we shut it down and we moved forward as a team, united. Now, I, I, Al, I want to ask you this because I talked about it in my opening monologue. The Never Trump movement, the Stop Trump uh, faction, they tried to disrupt the convention what did you make of what they did yesterday? Why are they trying to show the Republican Party as divided? And why are they trying to undermine Trump? I think why they were, you know, first of all, they get the feelings hurt. They lost. Uh, these are people that, did, uh, that will not put America first. We were determined and we, uh, we were focused on what was going on. When we heard what their move was, a rule, a rule, a memo was made in the Rules Committee by Ellen Stefanik from New Hampshire that says people that side this petition will have an opportunity to pull their name out. So what happened is that they had like nine uh, states with different, you know, cats and dogs in those states that signed this petition. You have to have 50%. When that rule went in was passed on the floor, many people signed the petition, pulled their name off it because they want the party united. So then you end up under seven states and they could not make their roll call, was not good enough. And the people that put for America first in the Republican Party kicked their butt. Al, do you think, is this the end? Is this the obituary now for the Never Trump movement? I hope so. You know something, the Never Trump movement is a very small amount. Because if you take a look at Cruz, you're looking at his um, delegates that are bounded to him. Nobody's looking at this here. If you look at Kasich, he's got it in Marco Rubio, they're in Bush. They're all bounded to them. Unless they release them, then naturally they have to vote for them. But Trump's got over 1,540-something delegates. And I, there's no doubt in my mind the, the party will unite as one team. Al, uh, the media, we're here on Media Row, Al. You see many of these liberals as I see them. We're, what, 10 feet, 15 feet away from CNN, the Clinton News Network. It's been nonstop all day. They have not stopped. Melania mania saying she plagiarized those four or five lines from one paragraph from Michelle Obama. They're trying to turn it into the crime of the century. What do you make of this scandal, Al? And do you think it's going to divert attention from the great night last night and potentially the very good night tonight? I, you know, some I, I think it's going to fade away. And the reason why the people are, are tired of the liberal media. You remember my comments there when I told the liberal media to get their heads out of their butt and focus on the real issues? They're picking and choosing words. If you take five wives and you put them together that love their husbands and they all give a speech, nine out of ten times many of their words are going to be the similar about their husbands. This We're talking about a lady who is a professional, who is a business lady, who is a model. And you got the liberal media that attack this woman as a mother, as, you know, a family person. It's a disgrace. They should be ashamed. But if this was a Republican, did what the liberal does, we'd be all over the country. I, as we're bad, bad people. It's a damn disgrace. Al, I'm just curious. What drew you to Trump? Why did you support Trump so early on? And why do you continue to back him 100% the way you do? Well, you, you, I, I'm from Cambridge, Massachusetts, first of all. Like Re well, Al, really? Yes, I am. I, my grandfather was Al Vellucci, the mayor of Cambridge. He's a four-term mayor. From the Communist Republic yes. of Cambridge. I grew up with Tip O'Neill. I grew up with the Kennedys. I didn't know any better. I used to ask my grandfather, how come you keep taxing people, raising money, and you're going after the working people? So as a legislator for 10 years, I haven't voted for one tax or one fee. God bless you, buddy. But anyways, what drew me to him is I met all the candidates. When Donald Trump, they came in in March, they set up a meeting a couple of weeks before he was coming into New Hampshire. 
And I told uh, Corey Lewandowski and Steve, Representative Steve Stefanik, it's not about me on veterans. I'm going to bring some friends. I brought the VFW, American Legion, the uh, Marine Corps League, the Disabled Vets. I brought the Patriot Guard Combat Vets and the State Veterans Advisory Committee. We all sat in a room, in a conference room at a hotel by the airport in Manchester, and Donald Trump comes in. He looked me in the eye and he talked about where he was at. But the bottom line on veterans' issues. But the thing is, he says, I want to know what's going on. So we sat there and we listened. He took in what we said. And then, like I said, I met Ted Cruz. Uh, Ted Cruz uh, said how he was going to take care of veterans. But if you look at Senate Bill 1082, he didn't sign on the Accountability Act. That bill is still sitting there that the House passed to fix the VA. Because the first Accountability Act was a feel-good. Donald Trump looked me in the eye and he said, I will not let one veteran left behind. He made it clear that he has our back on national security, on the budget. Because all this budget deficits, everything deals with our national security. Okay, the wall. It's one big puzzle that deals with the safety of Americans. He believes in putting Americans first. I'm just as motivated. And the reason I started to talk about the Democrats, because under Ronald Reagan, my second ter- two years of Ronald Reagan, I didn't vote for Ronald Reagan. I switched parties under Ronald Reagan the second year because I seen how our military went from deadline planes that couldn't fly, tanks, and we had no money for training, no money for bullets under Carter. And here comes Reagan and strengthens the military. We got our first big pay raise. And I look at Donald Trump, and I'm just as motivated now as I was then with Donald Trump. I tell you, he's a man that says what he's going to do, and there's no BS. Al, uh, a lot of the media, NBC News, CBS News, PBS, CNN, uh, Chris Matthews actually said it was gross. That was the term that he used. Uh, Softball on Softball said that to blame Hillary for Benghazi, the way Rudy Giuliani did yesterday, or Pat Smith, the mother of uh, her slain son, Sean Smith, that it was unfair and gross. What do you make of Benghazi? And as a veteran, is Hillary Clinton responsible? Uh, You know, Jeff, I'm a uh, a veteran that went to Desert Shield, Desert Storm. I'm also a father who sent a son to war to Iraq as a Marine Corps helicopter avionics um, technician. Hillary Clinton, to me, is the Jane Fonda of the Vietnam. She is a disgrace for any lot. The lies that she told those mothers about their children that got killed over there in Benghazi. She dropped the ball on over 400 emails requesting backup security. Something's wrong there. I wish they let the uh, made the documents public on why uh, Anderson was the ambassador Anderson. You know, because in my mind, I want to think that were they moving guns? Were they doing something there? Why did they, how did they know he was even there? This whole thing disgusts me. Hillary Clinton should be put in the fire line and shot for treason. Now, Al, I'm noticing here at the convention, and I find it hilarious, because you're right about Ambassador Chris Stevens and Sean Smith and Ty Woods and Glenn Doherty. A lot of people are wearing T-shirts Hillary for prison in 2016. Are you one of those, Al? You're going to wear one of those T-shirts? You know, some, I don't. I don't wear the T-shirt. Uh, of course, I'm a collar guy. But anyways, uh, <laughs> you know. But you know, it's true because if you do some Google search, there's a Marine Corps major right now who was over in Afghanistan because he moved around a lot. He put classified material on one of those little computer chips that you put into your computer. Oh, they destroyed him, Al. Right. And what happened is they're trying to kick him out of the military. I they know. want to court martial him. They want to put him in jail. But they yet, want to crucify they him. Want to, you're, you're damn right. But yet, how can Hillary... What I don't understand is, how can Democrats, liberals, progressives, how can you turn your back on somebody, a piece of garbage like her, that gets away with stuff like this and your everyday normal American goes to jail or gets kicked out of the military or loses their job on the State Department. It's a shame how the Democrats, you know, turn their back on our stuff. It's like voter ID. They don't want anyone to have ID so they can get people from the dead to vote. Al, can we have you on the show again, my friend? Jeff, I'll come on. You got my cell number. Whatever, you know, I'll come on any time <laughs> in support for Donald Trump or veterans. I mean, I'm a Second Amendment activist. Um, you know, veterans activists, you name it, I'm there. You're my kind of guy, Al. Hoorah. We've been talking with Al Baldessero, Donald Trump's veterans co-chair. Al, I want to thank you 
not just for everything you've done for our country right now, but also for your service in the military. You're a great American, and God bless you, buddy. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Take care. Bye. Okay, my friends, your reaction, your calls, and now Megan Kelly. It's breaking. Just put the knife into Roger Ailes. Don't touch that dial.